Photography Daily. Welcome to a new week. We've had a number of guests of late suggest that there's a picture in everything and everyone. Today, one of the American greats, a photographer's photographer, Bill Owens, the architect behind the book Suburbia, a study of the tracked housing communities post war. The man who made pictures of the so called ordinary for studies that are lauded as being some of the most important documentary images of a period in American history. But equally, a straight talking photographer who accepts his plaudits with a sense of humor. And a lot of life, as you know, is a non event. You get there and it's boring. I've been to a lot of things you get all jacked up to go to, and all I can think is get, how drunk can I get? How soon can I get out of here? More from Bill Owens soon. I hope you had a good weekend. We spent hours celebrating our 12 year old's birthday, four months late. We went into lockdown in March in the UK, three days before our Jack was supposed to have his friends round for a party. Everything tumbled his party, the ball games in the park, the karting, the whole lot. He took it with a humour and was pretty steadfast, but we could feel his disappointment. And I'm sure he thought it'd be done in a couple of weeks when the adults came out and organised a cure. Perspective, of course, is important. And as adults, that's perhaps a little easier to digest. But our Jack grubbed hold of perspective far better than I think I gave him credit for. And even though right now we still couldn't put on the kind of bash he'd been looking forward to with all his buddies... It felt good to be able to welcome his best friend and family round for an American diner experience and what is in our place now the famous Jack Stack, fully loaded homemade burger with a not-so-homemade cheat sauce from Tesco. We dangled a piñata from the apple tree in the back garden and Jack wrote Corona on this sweet or candy, if you will, laden cardboard unicorn. It felt good to be able to take a big stick to Corona who didn't last long and was felled after half a dozen blows. If only the real corona could fall so easily. But all in all, it was good, of course, to feel normal again. For months, it seemed that anyone approaching the door was cause for a DEFCON alert. And that, I can't deny, I've absolutely loathed. So being sociable and being normal was, for me, proper cause to celebrate. And it's in celebration of the normal that today's guest Bill Owens talks of. In the 60s and 70s, Bill Owens worked as a jobbing photographer for a newspaper in Livermore in the San Francisco Bay Area. He'd reached his calling on a roundabout route, fortune and travels and a, a stint in the Peace Corps playing important roles. But when he arrived in Livermore, he found he was photographing the people of communities living in these huge new American dream housing developments. The station wagon, the perfectly manicured front lawns, the 2.5 kids, the dog, and having to make pictures in places where, as he says, there often weren't pictures at all. Bill, who grew up on a farm, was now living amongst these people, his new people. And then one day, he made a picture of a four-year-old, a neighbouring kid called Richie, on a trike carrying a toy gun. It was one frame, just one, of a typical moment in a typical day in a typical street within a typical tract housing development. Suburbia was born. Works from the book hang in museums all over the world. Ken Light's Witness in Our Time, Working Lives of Documentary Photographers, now features that picture. And many photographers look to Bill as the reason they do what they do in the style that they do it. And whilst documentary is seemingly a buzzword today, attached by photographers to describe everything and anything in all genres, from sports, news, fashion, to the social photography world, I know, I'm one of those people, back then in the 50s, 60s and 70s, it was a style still developing from the more contrived style many were used to. This is a small part of a much longer interview that will be one of the new exciting Saturday focus features as we, yes, extend the daily from five to six editions. News on exactly what that means in tomorrow's show. You're part of a mission statement episode if you're with me tomorrow. But in terms of Bill today, I was intrigued to know how photography started for him and from where the style and desire to make pictures of the ordinary came. Well, I was inspired when I was in college. I took courses from John Collier, uh, who was one of the FSA photographers. That was the Farm Security Administration. And mm. during America's Great Depression, they hired a team of photographers to document America. And Dorothy and Lang and Russell Lee and many other photographers photo traveled all over America photographing it. 
And I remember looking at the photographs, and one of the photographs was inside of a house, and it was a woman standing there, okay, her back is to you, uh, with the kitchen cabinets. Yeah. And I'm saying, oh, my God, no photographer, National Geographic is not going to send somebody out to photograph kitchen cabinets. So when I'm working on my book on suburbia, I just w- up the kitchen cabinet shot, and one I just opened up the knife and fork drawer and photographed all the knives, forks, and spoons, and can openers, and the whole bit. And then I would open up the pantry, and there it is, Cheerios, Nabisco, Folgers Coffee. Now it would be Starbucks, of course, and all all the cookbooks, Crisco, paper bags, and all the material things that all of us have universally. So you can go to probably 100 homes, and you wouldn't find everything arranged right. Mm. Well, I went to more than 100 homes, and one day I just... Walked by, and there was the door open, and there was that cabinet, and it was perfect. I just grabbed my camera, and in two seconds made the shot. It has everything that you want to itemize about what we consume to cook, mm. you know, uh, and to eat is there or inside a refrigerator. I photographed uh, what we eat. Well, people were just letting you in, weren't they? Well, what were you saying? Well, I, I worked for the newspaper, so I had credibility yeah. on that level, but also... I'd advertise for people in the newspaper. I work for the newspaper. The ads are free. I just advertise. I'm working on a, I didn't call it a book, working on a documentary project. Sometime once it was for the city of Livermore. Let me come and photograph your house, your kids, your backyard or whatever. Yeah, yeah. And people ring me up and say, come on by, take a look at our house. And so that one, one shot was uh, the Chinese family eating hot dogs. I saw that one. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> See, so you get those kind of people. Did you come on in take a picture well most of the time those pictures are hard to do you walk in and i call it and a lot of life as you know is a non-event you get there and it's boring i've been to a lot of things you get all jacked up to go to and all i can think is get how drunk can i get and how soon can i get out of here you know <laughs> but the the book took a, a year to plan a year to shoot and a year it wasn't even a book probably two years on planning a year to really photograph it and then a year to go find a, a, a um, turn it into a book and find a publisher. So these kind of projects, uh, you can't walk up to somebody and say, "Hey, I'm doing a book. I want to take your picture and do yeah. a quote yeah. of you, etc., cetera, etc." Cetera. People are going to say, "Who in the hell are you?" And you got to remember, probably out of a hundred photographs, one might make it into the books. So if you got a uh, hundred photographs in a book, you've taken a thousand images easily, you know, and you edit down and you. Uh, like in the movies, you go back and reshoot. You know, if something wasn't there the first time, you always go back and say hello to the people and you say, hey, I want to photograph your kids playing in the swimming pool again. And you can re-photograph that or, or whatever you want to do. But I also, because of the FSA and the documentary done in the 1930s, uh, they had shooting scripts. And I did a little book on documentary photography that I wrote that, I had on each of my books, I did a shooting script. So I'd do a mission statement. Here's what I want to do, blah, 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 blah. Then I'd make a list of things to go photograph. So when I'm doing the working book, the working book is easy. You just pick up the telephone book. Yep. You start with an accountant, a baker, and you just go, I had a, everybody has a CPA. You call up the CPA and say, hey, I want to come by your office, take your picture. You know, you walk in and you take a couple snaps and you leave and you go back into the shot. The light isn't right or something's wrong. You can always go back and re-photograph your CPA. He's there, he's there every day locked into a terrible job. Or you go to a baker. Well, I, damn it, i got to get up at 4 o'clock in the morning to get the baker. But you go down to the local little baker and you can photograph the baker and yeah. you can go through uh, the alphabet on things to go photograph. And it's really fun to show occupations and I go to industrial parks and be I'd just be driving down the freeway and say, Well that building's kind of interesting. I wonder what they do there and go over and knock on the door. I have a press card, right? Show them my card. Can I take pictures of you guys working? Mm. They, they don't care. Just don't get in the way. Don't let the forklift hit you as it goes by. <laughs> I, I read an interview with you in, in which you described one of your fondest pictures at that time of the collection made it made, was made at a Tupperware party, which fe- yeah. featured Shagpar that looked about two inches high. Um, yeah. And I think I read that the, the owner had to use a rake to, to bring it up so it was re- ready for your photos. 
really upset too because years later somebody gave me one of those rakes and I've since <laughs> lost it. <laughs> I don't, I don't, I don't know why I didn't keep that rake, uh, but the, that's what they did. They would rake their carpet in those days. But I mean, the Tupperware. There's certain symbols of our society that I wanted, and like the Boy Scouts and mm. Tupperware. There's certain words and things that you know you're going to look for. And I just would look and look and look and talk to people and uh, till I could find uh, that Tupperware party. And you found uh, what you found it. it yeah. Yeah. I probably could do is be easier today because you just Google Tupperware salespeople local, and there would be the person's name and phone number. You call them up and say, oh, we're doing a party tomorrow. Well, in my day, uh, it was just the telephone. Yeah. Things moved at a different pace where today, anything I want, I go, hey, Siri, we're in Siri. Better watch out the, the computer will turn on. We're going to go uh, live now. Yeah. Where's something at? As a matter of fact, it did. It no, did. something else. No. <laughs> uh, you, uh, you can find everything a lot easier. You so, shooting, shooting the projects, you do suburbia, yeah. our kind of people, the Rotary Kiwanis, Toastmasters, uh, the our kind of people, leisure. Well, yeah, since you mentioned leisure, we'll return to suburbia because that's the seminal work. But you mentioned uh, leisure, shooting scripts that you were inspired to make. And, and in your archive on the website, I found the shooting script for the book Leisure. And uh, it seems to me, uh, Bill, that for anybody making a project, this is a great idea because often you, you have an idea for a project, but you have no idea where to start or end, really. Uh, sometimes you get no further than than a title. But a piece of paper... Starting from A, working through Z, note down everything or everyone, and just go tick them off. Um, I mean, there's a hundred topics for your 1972 book, Leisure. It's not alphabetical in this case, but it, but it is a simple tick list, and you work through it. Leisure is a great project to go to a football game, uh, to go to swim meets, uh, to go to... Uh, like uh, several times I tried to photograph people standing in line at a movie theater. And the problem with that shot is you got the p back of people's heads. Yeah. I mean, how do you show people standing in line? Do you want to show the marquee, right? What's at the movies? But you go look at these things. So what do people do for fun? Uh, they go swimming. They go boating. Uh, you, and so these things are really fun to go photograph because there's so much, I believe, leisure Travel is the number one industry in the world, mm. right? Well, it was. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you uh, you just say, I want to show people at leisure. Well, to me, the number one leisure that I love the most is going to a restaurant. Yeah. I mean, to pick up the menu and discuss, oh, I'm, I, I refer to myself as the risotto king. I'm pretty good at making risotto. <laughs> and try their risotto versus my risotto, you know, and to go to a restaurant and have a martini. Something I can do at home, but it's more fun when the little ice crystals are floating on the top of the glass and have a, a martini and talk to my, my wife is deceased, but to talk to your wife or your friends at a, at a dinner someplace and drop $100 on food, if not more, and be there for an hour is, is quite enjoyable. And it is to, it's a huge, uh, I think 15% of, of our industry is uh, restaurants. Just getting back to suburbia for a moment, I, I, I don't know how true this is, but um, it, it almost nearly didn't happen. Did, not, not just the book, but you, you almost burned the photos. Is, is that correct? No, no, I you know, that was okay. Is that just a lovely PR story? I, I made something up. Okay, I, it was Thanksgiving. My kids and wife was over. We were having a party outside, and I said, "I think uh, Edward Weston's son Brett was going to burn his negatives." Right. Uh, and so I said, "I'm thinking about burning." some of my negatives because when you shoot a book you got a lot of bad stuff right right of course uh, that did not go over well with my family each son wanted to take turns choking me <laughs> <laughs> for even suggesting that i even destroyed my files uh, uh, it's a lovely but, it's a lovely well, story though because when i read it i thought oh it looks like it was saved from the clutches of fire by somebody well your children won't put up with that. They have a. Right. They want their legacy. Yeah. Uh, the photographs have been given away to and sold in museums all over the country and all over the world. I'm collecting about fifty or sixty. I don't know how many museums. The, the cream of the crop is gone to mm. collectors and museums. But we can print more negatives. Uh, but I'm just part of that. I tell people I'm just part of that pie. I'm the little sliver. People say, oh, how famous you are. I say, yeah, well, let's go down to the bistro and have a beer and we can see how famous I am. We'll discuss beer. I know something about beer. But people aren't interested in a photographer. 
They well, have no idea. Yeah, that's, uh, it's, it's, they have no idea what a Guggenheim means to, well, to get a well, award. It, we'll come to Guggenheim now because I, I've been to the Guggenheim collection. I think the one in Venice. Um, I'm intrigued about the fellowship and and how and why it came your way. Well, you apply for it. You have to get three people to write for you, and then one day a check for and this is back in uh, the '80s. A check for twelve thousand dollars comes in the mail. There's no no strings attached. You got to twelve thousand dollars, and you go spend it. Didn't they say you have to take photographs for a, a particular period? You can't do anything they, else. They, they don't check on you. <laughs> you. You can do whatever you want to do, but of course, I took the money and spent it on to produce another book. Yeah. Like, what's that thing about if you have a, you know, don't succeed or something? You keep trying and trying. Why you? What's that? When you keep failing and failing, you just keep on trying because you don't know any different, right? Yeah, well, absolutely. I tried a lot of things. Yes, I know you have, and and, and broadly speaking. They've been very successful. I want, I want to investigate this thing you say about photography as, as not exactly being the ideal business. There's, there's no money in it. Your work, uh, the pictures you made for Suburbia, the working project, the leisure project, they're in 50, 60 museums across the world, Bill. I mean, you've sold prints to Elton John with the Guggenheim. I think you undersell it because you're a darling of, of the Guggenheim. And I'm, I'm not sure people will universally accept this, but you wouldn't be rushing out to to suggest that documentary photography is is a great career for the many now? Well, you can't make any money in photography. It's absolutely impossible. The only way is to be maybe working for a newspaper for a few, few years and then become a college professor. You know, that's the only way you can survive. No one can work for National Geographic for 32 years and retire and get a pension. Yeah. And I've met, I knew a fair amount of uh, photographers from the Chronicle and Examiner. A few of them made it to retirement, but it, it, you burn out. And those jobs are, uh, when you work for a huge corporation, are not the most pleasant jobs. And even though you're a photographer, you're really, uh, that's why I criticize Annie Leibovitz. I say, hey, hey, she, they, she got hired for that job. She didn't go out and create those things. When you're getting paid to do it, it's a different it's a different gig. You got to satisfy the client always, mm. and but, so when you're satisfying the client, that's a different meaning than having uh, doing a documentary pro- project. Bill Owens, and that's it for today. As I said at the start of the show, tomorrow is a kind of mission statement episode where we get to discuss exactly how the show is growing and how you can be a part of that too. And Bill Owens will feature in a much longer edition on one of the Saturday Focus episodes. Keep sending in your emails following what you hear, what photography means to you, and any interesting assignments that you've shot to studio at photographydaily.show, studio at photographydaily.show. And of course, we use those emails that you send in on the Friday edition when we go for a photo walk together. Music in the show from artlist.io, and I look forward to photographing with you, hearing from you, and talking with you tomorrow. Photography Daily is a Loading Zone production.